Now, the capture recapture method is one of my favorite topics to teach, and it is a lot of students' favorite topics to do in exams because of how straightforward the process is. Now, before we look at what the method actually is, I've done some research to show you where it actually came from. So it was developed by two people, Thomas R. Lincoln and George A. Peterson. Thomas R. Lincoln came up with the initial concept of um, capture recapture, where um, in 1930 he applied this method to estimate fish populations. His basic idea was that um, he captured the, he captured a sample and marking each of the fish with a tag, and then releasing them back into the environment. And then the next bit is he recaptures them. After some time, a second sample of fish was captured. And he was comparing the number of marked fish in the second sample to the total number of fish in the sample. He was then able to estimate the total population size. And then Peterson, who is more commonly um, given credit for this method, in in fact, in the GCC statistics text, textbook, is called... Um, the Peterson capture recapture method when it was actually initially first developed by Lincoln. Peterson made important contributions by introducing statistical techniques to enhance the accuracy of the population estimates in the capture recapture method. He recognized that there could be sampling variability in the method and he introduced statistical methods to account for this variability. And he also extended the applicability of capture recapture from fish to wildlife, making it a valuable tool in ecology and wildlife management. Okay, so here's the method we're going to use. You're going to take a sample of the population, mark each of the items, put the items back into the population and ensure they're thoroughly mixed. Take a second sample and count how many of your sample are marked. The proportion of marked items in your new sample should be the same as the proportion of marked items from the population in your first sample. So now let's look how we can use that in a question. Obviously, this is not English literature, so I'm not expecting you to memorize these steps. You don't memorize steps in statistics by writing down stuff on flashcards. You memorize it through practicing questions. So... Carlo wants to find an estimate for the number of ants in the colony. He catches 60 ants from the colony and marks each one with a die and then returns the ants to the colony. A week later, Carlos catches another 60 ants. Eight of these um, ants are marked with the die. Work out an estimate for the number of ants in the colony. Write down any assumptions you have made. So, what he's done is, in the first line, says he's taken 60 ants from the population we don't know how big the population is and then a week later he catches another 60 ants and finds that eight of them are marked so this is these are the people we've marked and this is our population that we don't know and then what does it say a week later he catches eight of these ants who are marked Eight of these ants are marked. In this case, we know the population he's taken is 60. What you need to know is that they're both proportional to each other. The population over here is proportional to the population over here. And the marked ants over here is proportional to the marked ants over here. This allows you to estimate the population that you think may be there. So now let's think, how can we find out what the population is? We just need to solve for x as if we were doing GCSE maths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these fractions. So I have x over 60 equals 60 over 8. And then what I'm going to do, yeah, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to times both sides by 60, so I get x on its own. And if I do that, I get 60 over 8 times 60. Type that into my calculator, and I get 
my estimate is 450 ants is our population. And the assumption we can make for this is that none of the ants died. Because if ants died, then the population would be different than the estimated population. I'm now going to put up some of the assumptions we can use for capture recapture. The population hasn't changed, so there have been no births or no deaths. This is what we assume when we do a capture recapture question. The probability of being caught is equally likely for all individuals. No tags have come off, so he marked the ants. If, if the marks rubbed off, then the population is going to be different than what we have estimated. And the sample is large enough and is representative of the population. So all of these assumptions here need to be memorized. Right, now we've got Ravina wants to find an estimate for the number of birds in a sanctuary. She catches a sample of 70 birds in the sanctuary and tags each of these birds. These birds are then released back into the sanctuary. The next day she catches a sample of 60 birds in the sanctuary. Ravina has tagged 12 of these birds. Work out an estimate for the number of birds in the sanctuary. So her sample is 70 over the population, which we don't know. We know she's tagged all those 70 birds. And then the next day, she does a sample of 60, but we know that 12 of them are tagged out of the population of 60. Now we need to try use this to find our total population. So I'm going to flip this, flip the fractions around so I have x over 70 equals 60 over 12 and then i'm going to times both sides by 70 so x equals 60 over 12 times 70. now i'm going to go to my calculator and write 60 over 12 times 70 and i'm going to get 350 birds as my estimated population write down any assumption you have made my assumption this time i'm going to write a different one none of the tags fell off i now want to show you a slightly quicker method if you're good at learning formulae this might be this might be a quicker method for you but if you're not method one is completely fine so method two just tells you the population straight away to do this you need to use the formula second sample divided by marked in second sample and then you times it by originally marked and this tells you what x is straight away this is the question we did earlier and to do it you take your second sample and in her second sample it's 60 divided by marked in second sample which is 8 times by originally marked 60 and that just tells you straight away 60 over 8 times 60 is 450 but 450 ants and then the next one what is our second sample 60 is our second sample marked in our second sample is 12 and then times by originally marked is 70. So 60 divided by 12 times 70 is 350 birds. Both methods are recognized in mark schemes. So whichever one you prefer, you can use. Ultimately, this is the same thing as the other one. It's just skipping a step. But either way, you get the marks for both. Okay, so now let's break down this exam question. David is writing a project about iguanas. He finds data on the internet posted by a biologist investigating iguanas on the Galapagos Islands. The biologist captured and tagged a sample of iguanas in La Liberia. The tagged iguanas were then released back from where they ca were captured. After a few days, the biologist captured a random second sample of iguanas in La Liberia and recorded the number of tagged iguanas in this sample. Here is the biologist's data. 
work out an estimate for the total number of iguanas in Laloberia. So I'm going to use my method 2, which is my preferred method, because I'm good at memorising formulae after using it constantly in practice. So second sample, divided by, marked in second sample, so 69, and then times by originally marked, which is 114. And then I go to my calculator and I write all of this in. And I get 401.47, which I'm going to round down to 401 to the nearest the whole number. Discuss the reliability of using the biologist's data to work out an estimate for the number of iguanas. Normally the word discuss in GCSE statistics means one positive and one negative. So I'm going to say, why is this reliable? If we look back at this table, this is the sample size. This is the population. This, it, this to me seems like a high enough sample size to be representative. So I can say reliable. Because good sample size. But why may it be unreliable? May be unreliable. I think, why could this be unreliable? Are we the people catching and tagging the iguanas? Is this primary data? No, we don't know how this data has been collected because it is secondary data. So we can say secondary data. Yeah, method of collection. Is unknown. So that could be why it's unreliable. And it is suggested that some of the tags might have fallen off the iguanas between the two samples. If this has happened, describe the effect it would have on the estimate worked out in part A. Or if tags have fallen off, then we would, we would have overestimated the population. And that's it. It's not too much more work in an exam question than a normal question. I'm going to put up the mark scheme now. If you're interested, this is where all the marks come from.